Hey, JJ Hammond here again with Gus. Hey. Gus, thanks hey. for coming on. Appreciate nice it. Nice to meet you, JJ. Uh, we're pleasure. at uh, STLDays.net. And uh, Gus, let's go ahead and hop right into uh, what got you first into tech. Well, my mom uh, was actually one of the first women, or even the first woman, that was uh, certified on the IBM punch card mainframes back in the day in like the 50s. Awesome. So uh, as she got through it, she started hating tech, and she actually um, ended up uh, adopting me in, in 71 and deciding to get out of that and just whatever. So anyway, long story short, is she always thought that tech was a great career but always told me never to go into it. Okay. But yeah, kind of always supported my computer habit from my Commodore 64s to my Commodore Amigas to the IBMs and then you know to where I am today. So you just naturally gravitated toward it anyways. Exactly. In fact, I was uh, um, talking to a uh, uh, college class a few weeks ago about uh, Drive and being able to you know uh, work their future. And I said, you know, you can get this piece of paper and it's great. But unless you drive yourself and move yourself to that next level and continue to strive, you'll never get anywhere. You'll right. just sit in the same spot. And maybe you want to do that, and that's fine. But if you don't want to do that, let's move to the next level and continue on. Right. So, uh, you know, throughout my career, that's been the thing. It's uh, I want to do this. This is the next thing I want to do. The, the next thing I want to do, and I, I went through that. The, the funny thing is, is that my father, who had two master's degrees, one in business and one in social work, not an overachiever at all. No, no. <laughs> and uh, um, he could never figure out uh, computers, technology, anything. And I remember my first tech job when I came home, and I asked him how much he made. He told me, and I go, oh, really? I'm making 15000 more than you are. I was nice. 21. And his mouth just dropped. And he goes, I see why your mother got you into computers. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, it was kind of the, the yeah, awe-inspiring awesome. because I had no yeah. idea how much he made because I never asked. It didn't right, matter, right? right? It didn't matter, right? You know, we had enough money. We, you know, we got along. I went to school, you know, all that stuff. And he was just floored, just utterly yeah. floored at, at what I was able to garner yeah, right. and then work my and way then up from that. And your potential to continue. Oh, to exa more. well, exactly. And that was my first job. And, yeah. you know, it, granted, I was a consultant, so I made a little bit more than the normal. But right. still, right. It, it, you know, it, it, that's actually what got me into tech. Um, oh, and what I was going to say is the college class, I was actually reminiscing that the first program that I actually wrote and was 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 sent out a, around the country was actually a file searcher that I wrote. I wrote the database code for it and whatnot for a bulletin board system on the Commodore 64 Whoa. when I was about 12 Making or 13. It happen. Yeah. You know, I feel surprisingly inadequate every time I talk to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what's funny is I feel surprisingly inadequate when I talk to people too. Yeah. Because it's kind of odd. It's that, all humbling, right? Oh, you're it's like, very, oh, yes. Walking around like, and then bam, you know. Well, you know, I, I, I try to be humble because right. when, I, when I started in tech, this would have been second or third job. You know, I tried to hold all of the knowledge in because, you know, knowledge is power and I know how you to do it to, and I, I yeah. don't want to share it because then I know I have a job. And I realized that then I have to do that and right. I have to do it every day right. over and over again. And instead without of, other people giving you, it, yeah. You, yeah, 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 exactly. So as, as I started sharing the knowledge and understanding that knowledge sharing is actually the power because yeah. if you're if you're it's open like an and, echo. yeah if you're open and willing then you also learn more but you're also able to go on to the next step right, right. exactly um, one of my former managers um, always taught me that if you want to be promoted you have to have somebody in line to be promoted because right. if you have nobody then why would you ever go and right. if you have a manager that's not willing to nurture you or, or a superior you're not going anywhere right, right? and uh, whether you're willing or not Right. So I, I fully believe you know, in that whole I, supply really, chain. That's awesome. I'm going to mm -hmm. remember that. Yeah, yeah forever. That, that, yeah. That's some really good advice. Well, this guy I worked for, this was before my first tech job. I actually sold computers at a, at a computer store that's now defunct. Um, but <laughs> uh, Which uh, one isn't besides Best Buy? <laughs> uh, no, it, it had two Cs in it. Oh, it was, gotcha. Then it was bought by a USA Corp. Oh, um, gotcha, gotcha. And, and then I think it ended up becoming Newegg. I might be wrong on that. But anyway, um, it, he was he was a great manager. I still actually talk to him, and I sure. haven't worked for him for twenty years. So, I great mentor, great business person. You know, it has that mind. Not. Oh, just yeah. uh, just a sharp mind for business and training and mentoring. Yeah. and that's actually where I, where I you know got into the whole thought of mentoring people. So that that's kind of my whole backstory of. I, you know, I love it. I'm sure yeah. there's more things that we could probably pick apart. And they're like, where'd you go to school? I uh, actually went to a tech school, believe it or not, uh, in Minneapolis and got a degree in computer technology, which taught me how to build a network cable and a drink mixer. 
because that, now mind you, I'm old enough to where computer tech uh -huh. back then was networking. Right, right, right. There, there really wasn't programming. Right. There really wasn't a web. Right. Um, it was you all know, that network. Cell phones, was cell phones were the size of bricks. Right. Um, you know, so back then there really wasn't anything. I or mean, uh, we're, yeah, we're talking 486s. Mm -hmm. And th there wasn't anything out there in those days that, that made the fun that there is today. Right. Now, when I was younger, however, the bulletin board scene and whatnot, and I, I liken the movie Hackers, which is, that movie. which is one of my favorite movies of all time. I've watched yeah. it like 100 times. I can't help myself. Yeah. Friends of mine hate it because they say, but it's not real. I said, it's not supposed to be real. It's a Hollywood uh, movie. Pretty sure it's a movie. But if you, <laughs> right. if you dig... If it was a documentary, yeah. we'd be hammering it, but no, it's not. No, no. <laughs> but if, if, you, if you step down and you look at the movie itself and you tr start taking their facts, even though some of the stuff is wrong, like when they're talking about the laptop and the, all the specs are completely incorrect or won't be made in 10 years or whatever. Right. It was all the subculture that they were trying to portray. And right. that subculture, I can tell you, existed because I knew it. Right. You were ingrained in it. Yeah. The people didn't look like that. Well, at least not in my area. They were, you know, rich kids or, you know, poor kids or, you know, whatever. It didn't matter. They had technology. It leveled them. Right. right? So two or three of the friends that I made back then, one was in Arizona. And now, mind you, this was in the 80s. So... You make a friend in Arizona, which was really hard back then, especially because there was no way to connect. Right. And uh, actually, I had two friends from Arizona, one from Illinois, and one from New Jersey. I still talk to every single one of them, and I go out to lunch with them still because two of them moved to Minnesota. That's awesome. And that was 30-some-odd years ago. So I think the technology culture, and one of the things that we need to teach all of the new people that are coming in, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, two like of the, uh, well, two, two of the guys that I was talking to last night that are actually two years out of college. And that this is actually something that levels everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a man. I think that's why I've it, gravitated a lot yeah. towards it. Yeah. yeah. Aside from the fact of mm -hmm. actual programming, but this yeah. is an added benefit. But that's fine. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's solving problems. It's creating something out of nowhere. Um, the only problem is, is that some of our, our, uh, significant others or relatives don't believe how strenuous programming oh, actually is yeah. because it's uh, it's continuous creation yeah and i get the the, the blank face yeah in like five seconds when i start or, talking about my day. or or the you sit at a desk eight hours a day how can you be tired right, right. well it's because you were sitting at a desk thinking consistently about how you're going to create something right. that has never been created before or you're trying to make make something fit into a box that it doesn't fit in here's a movie of hackers why don't you watch yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah hackers is like i said it's one of my favorite movies yeah. and i and i liken it to what i grew up with with that subculture because actually some of the stuff in there was fairly cl yeah, close, close and accurate. Um, in fact, uh, Serial Killer, who was in that, uh, in that movie, as in C-E-R-E-A-L, um, but his real name in the movie I was... I love uh, that when he first comes to things yeah. like, what? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> but his, 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 uh, his uh, real name in the movie was Emmanuel Goldstein, uh -huh. who was also the, the, if you look at the credits, was also one of the creative consultants or technical consultants, and also created the magazine 2600, which was the Hacker magazine. Nice. So a lot of the references in that movie were real. Were real. Yeah, from it's just some of the tech specs were wrong. Right. And, of course, the, to... the mainframe stuff was all hokey yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everything right. in that, I think, could happen. Yeah. And especially today, considering with everything. With the connection yeah. of um, you know, the, the, the cloud, everything that we've been mm -hmm. talking about, yep. these connections with these devices across mm -hmm. seas and mm -hmm. you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things that I... I do like to talk about is coming to these conferences um, and in fact I, I went to build this year uh, luckily enough and was able so to jealous. yeah well you know I went to a few sessions I've watched more sessions online than I actually probably went to right but I learned more at build um, walking around talking to other speakers and running into people that I haven't seen in years and and whatnot um, it was invaluable oh absolutely just invaluable and then the sessions on top of that mm -hmm. I would have paid four times what it costs to go to that every year yeah. and it they don't have to give me toys they don't have to give me you know anything i just have to show up and and hit the atmosphere and like this uh, this weekend i uh, i was able to you know hang out with people that i don't see very often in fact i, I was laughing yesterday and the day before uh, one of the guys that that uh is here is the uh, microsoft dpe from minneapolis oh. i've seen him five times in the last few months it's always been out of town i've i Physically, have not seen the guy in Minneapolis <laughs> and, in over a year. And where you're both located? Yeah, and li yeah. literally, he lived a mile from me. Wow! And I have to go to like Kansas City or here or Build to see sure. him. Yeah. Sure. And it's just it's <laughs> it's 
it's fine, kind of funny, but yeah, the, but that's the, kind of the beauty about it, yeah. right? Now, I mean, because oh, it's oh, so yeah. uh, you know, with with the hangouts and you know mm -hmm. all these different um, uh, ways of communication and keeping mm -hmm. in touch, it's fantastic. Oh, it is, yeah. and and now the the world's even getting smaller, right? Yeah. So ba uh, back in the day when when I grew up, the world was was this big, huge, you know. Uh, you know, oyster that we could crack, and I, I was lucky enough to come up in the heyday of the internet starting, and you know, uh, um, seeing bulletin boards and, and users and software and all this stuff, you know, transform. Because y you've got to remember that when I first got my Commodore 64, we were talking about 144k on a disk, and we right, were right. playing a game. Yeah. Right. Now we're talking about eight gigabytes of memory. Right just to run on your machine and right. all the rest of it's on your hard drive right. you know for a game and right. it's it's terabytes <laughs> right. or, or or gigabytes whatever it I might mean, be you're just right? thinking about how much you can push through that mm -hmm. i mean there's just the possibilities yeah. you know I, I remember my first hard drive was 5 5 megabytes oh i know you know i <laughs> i um i was going through uh, uh, my grandfather's uh, well my step grandfather's rather he um, collected computer parts mm -hmm. and stuff like that and he also collected, and he held on to all the. He was one of those guys. Oh, who, gotcha. Who categorized gotcha. everything, right? And everything yeah. had a place. He had his original receipt. It was like I want to say it was like almost fifteen thousand dollars for like a five twelve oh, wow. megabyte. And oh, I'm wow. like, holy cow! Oh yeah. You could yeah. buy like fifteen hundred computers. With that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, like I said, I, when I used to sell computers. One of the things that that was funny was uh, a typical computer went out out the door for twenty eight hundred dollars. Yeah, right. And it was about as powerful as a cell phone was ten years ago. Right. Right. And just and, and that was only twenty years ago. Now I've got a you know I've got a Galaxy S four, mm -hmm. which I'm not necessarily fond of, but it, it works well. But that's still more powerful than any computer that I've owned in right. the last you know, probably prior to five years ago. Right. I, I mean. And do you, do you see that? Continued growth of just you know the smaller form, not I, I see much it form I, factor, but more computing power. I see it changing. Okay. I, I I think the form factor is changing. I think Microsoft and Apple have have pushed us into that into that direction, um, and other companies have have you know kind of picked up the slack and, and are continuing that charge. I think we're going to see a lot more Google Glass type things. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to no, see a lot wearables. more wearables. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the agent smartwatch was one that caught my eye at build. It was a, an amazing idea of a, a, a Netduino that that uh, is built inside a watch, and you can actually step through code and change it in Visual Studio connected to the watch. That's amazing. It was it was it was amazing. I didn't catch that. I'm gonna yeah. have to catch that. Um, cool. Check Kickstarter. It was one of the highest grossing Kickstarter projects. Uh, I, I caught I that from there. Um, I think they asked for somewhere around $100,000, and uh, this might sound oh, like a pitch, but, but um, in 30 days they made $1.2 million. That's some, that, yeah, but and I mean, sold for what out. it does, yeah. Yeah, so uh, so anyway, this, the watch was cool because it connects via Bluetooth, right? It's low-powered low Bluetooth, sure. and, and it'll show you your text, it'll show you the, the, the thing, it'll show you what's playing. You know, it doesn't really do anything else. It will keep your time, of course, and it sure. syncs with your watch. Right, but the you know, or with your phone. Yeah. But the possibilities are there to do just about anything. Now, if you add a touch screen to that, wow. Right? I know, right, yeah. And then yep. the curve displays that they're talking yep. about. Yep. Some Not of these immersive, you know, get into it. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I think there was a, a talk about Microsoft, you know, and their own version of the, the glass and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I saw that more as a, an entertainment value mm -hmm. for with the connection with the Xbox. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, and, you know, a shoot em up and with mm -hmm. navigations and all sorts yep. of things going on there. Yeah, well, with the Google Glass, it was kind of funny because uh, Build this last year was in San Francisco, of mm -hmm. course, the home of Google, right? Yeah, right. And there were a lot of these people walking around Build with these things on, and they looked right. ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, seriously. I, it, however, I so see how many retail applications you could actually create with this. Right. Because imagine yourself walking into a retail store, and you have a grocery list on your phone, right? Right. Well, because you've got your Google smartphone, right, and your Google Glass, and just I'm just saying it that way because that's what we have today. Sure. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. and they're tied together, and you know, uh, your phone or GPSs and those you're in, uh, whatever retail establishment it might be, it might be a grocery store or a or a department store or whatever. And you walk in there, and it goes, oh, you're in the dairy aisle. You need milk. 
Let right. me target the milk that you like and highlight it on the glass so that as you're looking at it, it's like a heads up display and it just kind of flashes a little red, red hue over what you're yeah. looking at. Yeah. You walk up, you pick it up. Yeah. It, you walk down an aisle. How many times have you been in a grocery store and not been able to find the right milk or the right Every or the right can? Every single friggin' right? time. That's why the well, wife goes. <laughs> well, and, and, and you have glasses now. Right. Think if they're embedded oh, with yeah. with something, right? Yeah, absolutely. That that ties with your list and it knows where you are by you know geoprox or or whatever that happened to be in the store or RFID, right? Right. And you're walking down the aisle and it knows that you're looking for you know chunky beef stew. Um, or or low, uh, maybe even low sodium chunky beef stew if yeah, there is it, such it a thing, right? It pulls a Terminator yep. on me, right? Yeah, Where exactly. It, 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 it well, finds what yeah, and, 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 and then it, it just it just finds it. it and just highlights the spot on the mm -hmm. on the shelf that it it needs. And a lot of the retail stores, because I've worked for a couple of grocery stores and a couple of major retailers, um, and I all of them all all of those companies use uh, planograms, so they know exactly where that product should be. Now should maybe be. it's not there. Exactly, but, but they know the really spot. Close, they right? know the spot on the shelf. Uh -huh. In fact, in the inches to where it is. Really. So if you're able to hook in and know where you are, right? What aisle you're in, and uh, I know that I saw some technology, and I can't remember what it was called, but it was a uh, localized GPS. Right. So it's like aisle GPS. So you could put them in aisles. So that when you walk in there, your phone knows where you are. Right. Right. If like you've some, got the, right some of the events. They, mm -hmm. they do that a little yes, bit. Yes, they do, yeah. yeah. So as you walk in there, you know you're in aisle 12. You know aisle 12 has things. Well, as you're looking down the aisle with the with these glasses that have like just a, co a coating on them, things highlight, yeah. right? So you go, oh, hey, that's there and that's there, and it's just on your list. You, do, it, you don't even have to know what you're getting in that aisle. Right. You just have to know that it's highlighted because the planogram tells you that those items should be in there yeah. that are on your list. Yeah, now, now, talk about ease of, of oh, use. Oh, yeah. And in fact, it'd even go two more because then this, you could, as a retailer, pump into your your glass, like say green ones or yellow ones or something sure. that that show sales or sales, you know price yeah. cuts because yeah. you've bought them there in the last ten months or right. four months or you always hey, buy if them. Hey, you buy whatever. three of these, so instead of the packaging having mm -hmm. to be ridiculous, yep. they can just say, you know, we're running a deal, mm -hmm. and then it, it'll mm -hmm. outline three yeah. of them and. Yep. I, a, a friend of mine worked with a uh, national grocer, and I can't remember what state they're out of. But they put, um, they they built and put um, TFT screens on the dairy aisle, okay? okay. On every single, uh, it was labeled like everything. They had to revamp the whole thing. Um, but every day they put a different thing, so the the price tags would be there, and then it'd fade out and it'd show Pampers or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they showed no matter what they showed on those screens, they had a thirty to forty percent increase in sales that day, because if you're walking into the, into a store. Or the number two, well, in, into a grocery store, and this was just a grocery store, but the number one thing that people walk in there for is milk. Wow, I didn't know that statistic. Yep, it's good, good one. So to it, it, it's very close or very common that you're going in there for milk or something in the dairy aisle, right. whether it be that or cheese or you know whatever. So or eggs, because those are the three things that yeah. most people eat a lot, right? Or right. you utilize in something or right, coffee right. cream or whatever. Sure. So you walk into that aisle, and all of a sudden it's telling you, hey, remember. You know, if you have a child, you need Pampers. Well, it's there. Or right. may, uh, maybe the new video game came out or the new the new CD of whatever. Right. Well, you show it for like 10 seconds and pop it back and just show, uh, show the thing. And you're like, oh, yeah, I need to walk to electronics. And then if you have the same technology in electronics, that directs you to another part of the store. And all of a sudden, you've spent $100. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of a win-win scenario for... Uh, the the product place or the you know the, the vendors themselves you know to get their product out yep. the grocer the grocers and and um, so uh, let's talk a little bit we're talking a little bit about the future but that's okay it's yeah. fantastic to talk um, let's talk a little bit about what you are here to, okay. today in the last well, couple of days for well I, I've had four talks in the last couple of days one was kind of a surprise talk last week that uh, I guess a speaker dropped out and I got the call and well actually I didn't get the call I emailed them and found out because it was on the agenda so I found out awesome. Um, but that's okay. Um, the, these I'll guys, take it. yeah. The, well, these guys have been great. They've always been great. Jeff, Fa uh, Jeff Faddock and the team have always been really good, and they run a great conference down here. Um, it's one of the reasons why I come down here every year. Oh, this uh, is yeah. the ninth cloud. I'm on yeah. tenth. Yeah, this the, is amazing. The, the, especially this year. I mean, they sold out with a thousand attendees. Yeah, that's that's bigger than most, you know conferences period unless it's a micro you know a microsoft event right um I, in fact i've sp uh, spoken at national events before that only had 275 people right right granted they charged a little more but right. still, it, still it's still a, this is a lot of people i i 
took a couple of shots that I haven't had a chance to tweet out yet of a hallway where you literally couldn't see down the hallway. It was yeah. just people. That's, and, and, yeah. and I'm tall, and I couldn't see down it. So uh, it, the, the energy here is different. The, yeah. the um, speakers are top-notch. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the conference goers are top-notch. And you know, I've never had a bad experience here. And, and that makes it, and it's nice because I think this is my fourth year coming, and I've seen a couple of people every year here wow. that I've been here. Yeah, and it's the same people, but they come back because they know it's a great value and they get good training and they learn something. Right, and they are able to network and, and all those things. Yeah, exactly. Well, networking is just the side the side effect. I, right. I enjoy teaching people. I enjoy mentoring. Uh, it's part of my current job, so I, I actually enjoy doing that. So what do you do? Uh, I work in the technical guidance and mentoring uh, department of a major retailer. Um, that's about all I can wow. say. No, that's fine. Uh, um, but uh, it, it's it's one of the most rewarding jobs I've had. Um, I get to work with some cool technology. I get to set uh, uh, help set you know uh, the technology stacks and and work on white papers and do test that's code. It's going to be extremely and, gratifying. Oh, I mean, did you see yourself being in a position like that when when you were younger? Or I didn't see did myself being in a position like, like that, that when I interviewed for this. So really? I mean, yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of uh, out of left field that that's that's kind of where I, where I you know ended up and I do uh, and one of my things and it, it's it's fun even though it's, it, if you ask most developers it's kind of a penance I have to deal with their TFS farm hmm. so but it, it's still small beans compared to being able to do really fun cool stuff right. and, and work with work with other groups and and get them to, to move ahead right. and that's one of the things that I've been doing and I, I actually enjoy it I enjoy oh, meeting crazy. with people and going, yeah. hey, look at this new cool piece of technology. Can you make it work? Can you not make it work? I know one of the, the other guys that was up here uh, made the comment about an hour of not being long enough to, to you know, teach something. Yes. And, and, and that's totally yeah. right. And actually even out an hour and 15 mm -hmm. is not enough time. Um, but what I try to do, and I think I heard, heard that person say it too, which will be on this podcast uh, either before or after me. I don't know when it will get uploaded. But the... The, the point being is that if you show a vision and s show somebody what something can do, right. they'll take it five steps further. Right. And that's all I ever try to do in my talks right. is teach one person one thing in that room, I've done my job. Right. Because some people go into a talk and they know everything about it and they still sit there. Okay? Do whatever you want. It's your, it's your time. It's your money. Um, but I always go into a talk that's completely off topic of what I – am doing or was thinking about doing because you never know what you're going to pull, be able to pull out of it and go somewhere else and utilize right I mean, or see six months from now it's almost like code just take a snippet yep. you know and then you can maybe plug it in somewhere and, and, and figure it out and stuff like that but that's that that's intense i mean that would that would just be the most the, like the first thing is to see a new piece of technology figure out how to make make it work and like you said you do need more time, but again, if it's somebody, you know, if it's if it's people who are engaged in uh, what it is that you're talking about, mm -hmm. and you can get them on the path, right? Yep. Because we were talking about that before. Get them on the path to to where they can they continue to build upon that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what yeah. really what it's all well, about. Well, well, and and it's in instilling an image of a process or a product or something. Seeing and saying, now. yeah, and saying, hey guys, look at uh, one of my talks was on .NET or MVC profiling, mm -hmm. something that people overlook. And uh, I was actually working on something like this. I went, oh, that sounds like a good talk. Here, let me let me send it out and see what what kind of bite I get. Well, the 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 in essence the uh, of the talk, I used Glimpse, which is a free plugin that, mm -hmm. that's available via NuGet, and. The uh, Redgate contacted me and said, "Hey, by the way, we've got this ants profiler. Awesome. Yep. People, yeah, uh, we had them on. Redgate's uh, they're they're awesome. Um, so I got a demo of their stuff, and, I, and it was so easy to use that I threw that in my talk, and I did the brute force stuff and firebug, and went through all of this stuff. And I went, you can't get it all from here. You can't get it all from here. This will give you additional information. You know, this is what you get for free. This is what you kind of have to pay for, no matter what you do, because right. they're going to charge you. Yeah, yeah. And everyone thought it was awesome because now you're seeing everything end to end, right? Right. And seeing what's available, what you should be looking for, what could happen. That process. You know, yeah, that, exactly. Right. But a lot of people don't even think that. Think that. I mean, there. It's the, the you know, my my function takes 1.7 seconds, but it's one update. It right. should take like 1.7, you know, hundredths of a second. Right. But it doesn't. Well, have you profiled it? What? 
<laughs> right. That's, that's a right, 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 right. blank stare. Don't, so, don't so in the headlights. You're, you're teaching dynamic understanding, basically. That's, that's what you have to. Do. Yeah. You have to teach troubleshooting. Right. You have to teach thinking out of the box. Um, I, I was actually uh, in a in a discussion the other day, and I can't remember where it was. If it was here or somewhere else, they were talking about the outliers. I actually it was here. In fact, it was at the speakers' dinner or right after it. Okay. Where a lot of the speakers are out, uh, what they call outliers, and there is a great book called The Outliers. Mm -hmm. um, and it talk it doesn't talk about us per se or the way that this this was a this term was, used in yeah. statistics. Yeah, it, it's it's a complete. Well, no, the, actually, the outliers is actually about people. Oh, okay. That, that okay. sit outside of the norm. Oh, gotcha. Th okay. Th right. Think Hawking or Einstein, gotcha. uh, Newton, you know, people like that. Right. Um, but we we sit as outliers in a completely different context, and I hadn't even thought of this until the person said this, but he talked about outliers as we're the ones that sit outside of the box looking in. Then, going, yeah. hey guys, get out of the box. Think outside of there, Burn and, it down, and we're doing it. it back up. Yeah, this and we're and know. we're doing that all the time. Right. Um, one of the chief things that that um, the corporation that I work for is pushing right now is failure is acceptable. Right. Because uh, you know you think about it in training, uh, and uh, I should say physical training. You're breaking down, you know, or becoming a, a marine or an army, and and you know doing that. By the way, it's just past Veterans Day. Thank you, veterans. Mm -hmm. um, but you're doing any of that, you break the person down before you build them up. You have to fail at least once or twice during that process and you learn from it every time. If we did stuff and we never failed, we'd never right. learn, we'd never grow. Or no, never try. Yeah, exactly. Or you wouldn't try. Chance, yeah. Right. So it, it you know, to the developers out there, it's good to fail. It's right. actually positive to fail. Yeah. In fact, I because uh, you learn from that failure and you fix it. it. Exactly. My last talk, my demo failed. But my demo failed, so I switched back to an old demo and said, hey, this is what we're going to do. I'm still going to talk about the subjects, but I'm going to show you how it failed, and I'm going to say, how did it fail? And right. we don't know. And I had two people in there that were actually utilizing the technology and doing it consistently, and they looked at the code while we were in there with everyone in the class go, you're doing it right, and it's still failing. So, right. I mean, we fail all the time, right. but sooner or later I'll figure it out, I'll post it up there, and then you know somebody will be able to contact it or see it and then yeah. they'll be able to fix it that's you know in the that, future that's that's got to be nice yeah, too because you enjoy doing that and then mm -hmm. seeing that echo come back to yeah. what we were talking yeah. about but by the way it's called coding by google is what we call it coding by google. <laughs> <laughs> i love that um, yeah i was yeah. working on a project this other day and he was like what? <laughs> there was a uh, i can't remember if it was a gif or what, what, what but it was something like what if google went down it was like i think keanu reeves the, the, was like uh then like, we bang it like then that. we bang it come on yeah. this is a microsoft conference yeah 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 um <laughs> right. Well, I think the the general thing was, you know, what if the search engines? Oh, that would be bad. It would be the it, end it of the world. Yeah, um, <laughs> planes would stop flying. Right, I mean, right, it's, right. It's bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's bad. No, that would be bad. That and, would be yes. Yeah, and not to not to step back, but technology also scares me because okay. I, I think we've gotten to the point of relying on it why instead it, of utilizing. It? Tell me why it's scary. No. Yeah. Um, well, and and this is the whole thing and. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I'm a paranormal person. I love conspiracy theories, even though I think some of them are completely and 100% bogus. Right. Um, but, of course, if there's a way, there's a conspiracy, right? right I sure. mean, it's just gray area. You've got a conspiracy. But th uh, I think of all of the things that we have that are run by computers, okay? And it's pretty much everything. In fact, down in the lobby here at, at St. Louis Day of .net, we're lucky enough to have two Tesla automobiles. Yes. Beautiful freaking cars, okay? Yeah. I, I'd never think that uh, you'd take a 17-inch widescreen monitor and slap it in a dashboard. I know, right? But it's yeah. there, and it's a touchscreen. It's awesome. <clears throat> and they're not that expensive, but they're really right. cool, but they're all electronic. Right. So if it got hit by an EMP, we're done. You know, my dad was a, an auto mechanic and a body mm -hmm. uh, mechanic, and, um, you know, I, I had, I wouldn't say pleasure, but mm -hmm. I had the chance to, to work on a lot of this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. before it was computerized, yep. right? And I share your concern because I because I straddle between the two worlds mm -hmm. a little bit um, because I'm a um, I enjoy the antiquity part mm -hmm. of things and I, I also see what things can be right yes but I also I'm not oblivious to uh, mm -hmm. what they could be used for yeah so that's always a concern and, and security we've talked to a lot of guests about security and stuff and and that's another thing but also continued functionality yes and continued be it for a person a person not a group of people to fix a problem that comes up. So you brought up cars. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic example. Mm -hmm. Man yeah. has car. Car needs man mm -hmm. to go. You know. Yep. If you can't have that, 
and that's what we have mm -hmm. now is, is and that's a, a great I mm -hmm. think example of you can't fix these things now you mm -hmm. have to bring them in and they have to be completely disassembled yes. as opposed to I can just go in and throw change my carburetor or spark plugs yep. or whatever and just hammer out my Camaro and that yep. kind of thing. I, I'll, I'll give you a great example and the Harley Davidson Motor Company is one. Uh, mm -hmm. Well yeah. actually and I shouldn't say this because there are great dealers across the country but for my area, there are some really poor ones. They won't work on the carbureted models anymore because their students that have gone through, you know, college can't plug into them and have a computer tell them what's right. wrong. What's with wrong them. with it? Yeah. yeah. So Instead of being able to have yeah. that listen and uh, that the, feel the listen, the feel, the sound, the mm -hmm. the the. the the troubleshooting skills, right? And that's what it is: is it's troubleshooting skills. You go through the list of things that you know could cause the symptom, and you right. fix it. Right. Well, if you can't do that, or a computer can't tell you, exactly, then what uh, you can't do it. What scares me is the transportation industry, right? Absolutely. Airplanes are all fly-by-wire. Cars are all fly-by-wire. You know, um, trains. Most trains are now becoming all Naturally, drones and fly-by-wire and whatnot. Well, what happens when the computers go down or they crash? Right. They crash all the time for me. They have something has to happen sooner or later, and it's I mean, going to. Yeah, well, and and it's it's it, you know it's kind of funny too because you talk antiquity and back back in the day and whatnot. When the space shuttle was being flown, it was being flown from code that was on the Gemini capsules or the <laughs> Apollo capsules, I believe. Right, right. So I mean, it's that old and right. that tried and tested. Whereas, right. you know, now we've got machines with you know pumping out new yeah, things yeah. that haven't been on the market for that long. Exactly, like Microsoft Sync. I actually saw, I was in a car with a couple of other speakers that I won't name, um, going to dinner. This was a few months ago. Um, and one of the guys hooked his iPod via Bluetooth to Microsoft Sync and actually crashed Sync and had it reboot the car. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Uh, and it was just because he had too many songs. Really? Yeah. That's what the, the problem That's what we believe. Yeah, yeah, actually the guy that owned the car said he'd had it happen before. Wow. Where if you have because too many songs. Because it was trying to ask for too much. Well, yeah, it's Bluetooth thing and it's loading arrays yeah, and it's, you know, like, it's it's doing this whole playlist, right? And then it crashes. There must be a it, line in there that says if. <laughs> I, I dispose doesn't numbers, work. <laughs> yeah, if song uh, number exceed count or whatever mm -hmm. fail. Uh, yeah. Something. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, but that's, those that's are things great, that. Yeah, that's that, a great example. Yeah. The, the, those are things that, that kind of scare me about the future. Yeah. I mean, there, there are tons of positive things about the future yeah. that, that I think, like, we talked about techno, uh, technologically uh, and whatnot. You know, uh, even the advance of, of, of oh, yeah, the advance of healthcare, the advance of surgeries, you know, and, and things like that. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, completely awesome. However, we, I don't think we need, should rely on technology. Yeah. I think we should partner with technology and have it help us. Right. Instead of, Sitting in a Google car, having it drive around. Just yeah, and, living and, and that's out kind of, of I, I think, and, and you probably agree with this, that it is going to be the issue mm -hmm. of, of that, the dynamic thinking mm -hmm. again. You yep. know, because when you when you go into whatever it is, um, a car, a vehicle, grocery, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. is, what, you're like, okay, this is all good and theoretical, but the actual, it always falls back to the the politics of the situation, the bureaucracy, and those kind of, of course, yep. the same thing, um, the bean counters, the financial support. Mm -hmm. And then the communication within mm -hmm. management, and then the feedback, mm -hmm. and then time tested. Yeah, have to figure out how this stuff works. Yeah, and that conversation going forward is all going to be the need for to have a dynamic conversation, but it's always going to be that mm -hmm. slow term. The the healthcare situation mm -hmm. with the .gov stuff that's going. You know, yeah. all these all these things are they they need time. Yeah, and I don't think I, I don't think enough of that conversation is being had in a productive way. I think there's people talking about it, but there's no actual um, a good results that we're seeing from those. Uh, definitely, and uh, you know, you bring it up, and I'll I'll, I'll put my two cents in this whole healthcare um, debacle, uh -huh. as I'll call it. I have been on that project, right? Not that specific project, but, but a project that's similar yeah, to that, it. that crashed when it went out, mm -hmm. and or, or been part of a project that, that's pretty much went up in flames. All you need to do is have oversight while the process was being developed right. and test it. Right. It's not over that and difficult, and, and that's one of the things that uh, that I've I've tried to state is that unit testing, which at one point I was completely against, and now I'm totally for, <laughs> because I I was working at a at a company and I went in fixed a bug right, and I ran the unit test and seven other ones failed. Well, they failed because they were written. Actually, four of them failed because I changed something that it was it was needed and I didn't change it correctly. Right. The other three failed because they were written incorrectly in the first place to support the bug. There you go. So now you've got immediate knowledge right. that you you screwed up. Well, actually, you didn't screw up, but you know you have a problem. 
well, if you had that on this project, and I don't know that they didn't, but I'm just saying hypothetically, right. if they would have had that, if they would have had QA testers and they would have done it properly and load tested it and done it in a, what was it, a billion dollar yeah. project, mm -hmm. all of this should have been done. Yeah, and, and there's no excuse that it wasn't. You know, and that's what I've heard a lot, and and that's something that I'm going to take away from a lot of this is the the stop test, stop test, stop. You, you want to test mm -hmm. all the time, constantly, yep. Yep. with exactly. different scenarios, different possibilities, yes. different permutations, all these things. Mm -hmm. well, and as opposed to this chunk approach, mm -hmm. right? Yep. I'm just like trying to chunk it out yep. and do it every, you know. Yeah, and and, I, and I'm a a very very big um, proponent of having testers. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a lot of corporations that f that uh, point blame at testers and say, oh, it's overhead. We don't need it. You're developing the code. You should test it. Well, I can tell you first off that I can't break my own code because I know how it works. Right. I want somebody that doesn't know what I did to break my code. Right. Because that's what they do best. Right. Because once I and put they it out, will. <laughs> and because once I put it out, somebody's going to type an A in a numeric field, and I'm not going to test it because I know it's supposed to be a number. I'm not going to put an A in there. And right. of course, as a developer and an analytical brain and whatnot, I don't think that way. So right. I'm never going to test it for that. Right, right, right. Because I wrote it not to do it. I know it's not going to do it, so I'm not going to do it. Right. But if I get somebody that's you know thinking outside of the box or working as a as a person that's that's physically functioning, you know as a worker they're going to do it right because they have no idea what i did right and then they're going to give me the bug and i'll go oh duh it's numeric i should test right and, and some of these things are so <laughs> dumb, right oh I yeah mean, like this is the first thing they're like why well why is there you know and then it comes down to this and yeah. like i said the politics and everything and the, the non-communication between those uh different sectors and, and, and making it and making it work and um, yeah yeah, yeah and, and, but then you know if you have the testers that are good and they're they're actually doing it, and then you take their tests and you're able to automate them and load test, okay. then you've got the best of all all you know worlds. Yeah. And then you have a, a website that most likely will function. Right. Um, uh, years or year, product. Yeah. Well, yeah, product. It does. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter if it's a if it's a development or a, <laughs> right. or a house or sure. whatever. It's still the same thing, right? right. You, you still have to go through and validate that everything was done properly as Absolutely. you're going up. Um, one, one of the projects that I worked on years and years ago, um, we had a consulting house come in, and I was actually a consultant for this company at the, at the time too, um, right before uh, the consultant burst of like 1999, 2000, mm -hmm. 2001, yeah. and then the Twin Towers went and it even got worse. Yeah. Um, the, the dot com yeah, and all that. Well, that was horrible back then. But So the, this group came in and they built the system that was doing whatever they were doing, and they had this website that, had, that was supposed to support 200 users. It crashed after one. <laughs> okay. Right. But the, because they never tested it, they just right. coded it to run to under run. 200. Right. And it took three, uh, three or four of us, like, I don't know, I'd say two weeks to get it up to like 70 to 100 users. Wow. Because it was, I mean, li it literally just it was, was just written wrong. It, no, it was written wrong. Right. Okay. It was actually physically written wrong. Oh, gotcha. But, it, and we just had to devise new ways and, and, you know, dream up this stuff. And this was, you know, back before web services and yeah. back before yeah. certain other things so we were we were doing xml before xml was cool right and you know we were able to do things like that and and we were able to solve the problem but it, it took a little bit of time but we were able to solve the problem now with the healthcare one i haven't been on the website i don't know what the problems are i actually haven't read but any company worth a darn right. should have been able to fix that within a month i'm sorry right, I, right. if it's that bad there's something fundamentally wrong in the With architecture. The architecture yeah. of the, in the framework it, and how it's somewhere. It, it's not. It's not the site itself. Right. Um, there's a grocer from where I'm at that uh, that upgraded a couple of days after. We're probably going to find out a lot about this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, in yeah. the next coming. You know. Well, and now that we have Twitter and we have CNN uh -huh. and stuff, this stuff hits immediately. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, you know, 20, 30 years ago, we didn't have yeah, that. You'd have you to wouldn't find. And if you didn't read the paper, you never yeah, knew. Right. But the, the, you'd have yeah. to wait for the scoop yeah. to come the, out. Yeah. This this grocer up, updated their website. That yeah, failed I, again. Same thing, right? Right. And I, uh, I they did the back end, and I know it used to be Microsoft. I don't know what it is now. Um, but long story short, is I ordered Thursday, um, and it was still screwed up. It still told me I was like an, uh, 45 minutes from the end of my deadline for being delivered the next day. And it came up and told me that I had 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds before before my deadline. I'm like, I have 43 minutes. I have to hit save like now. Right. And <laughs> it, it's it's counting down from when I first went on that page. Oh. So yeah. So there were still there are problems on that Got site. It. However, functionally, right? 
and, and functionally. Yeah. Fu now here's where I here's where I'm going to kind of detour from the whole functionally compared to physically or you know whatever. Tangible. The, yeah. The the tangible thing is now the site physically works and I can order groceries and have them delivered. Right. Sometimes I get an email. Sometimes I don't. But to me, that's not tangible because my groceries show up and what I put on that list show up, right? If the clock is wrong, I still know it's 11 o'clock and it's 10 o'clock now <laughs> right. and I have an hour. So, right. so technically, I don't care about that. Right. However, some people may just not understand and wait and wait and wait and then get charged like a late fee or whatever they, the, the site does. To me, that's not a problem that needs to be addressed. My problem w would be if I click on an item and I want it to be put in my shopping cart and then I want to check out, that has to function. Right. Right. Okay. So with the with the whole healthcare thing, the first thing is is it should show the right data. You should be able to select it. You should be able to sign up. And you should be able to hit save. Right. right. If text is wrong or colors are wrong, I don't care. I still have my medical coverage. Right. Right. right exactly. And. and uh, some testers will stop if they see text or colors wrong. Uh -huh. and they'll say, "I'm not testing anymore." And uh -huh. you know, and my my whole thing has always been test functionality. You know, aesthetics is second. Yeah, aesthetics are second that. because aesthetics are you know quick. It's change the words, republish the site, test it again. Right. I mean, exactly. it's very quick. Right. Code, so, however, no yeah, like code, however, can take the some time. Bone's got to be you, strong. Well, especially if you screw it well <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't <laughs> phys <laughs> physically work, right. it's going to take you a while to rewrite it. Right. So. Yeah, you made that foundation all sorts of wrong. This house is coming down. Yeah, or, or or you've written those database queries wrong, and now you're blocking everybody. Right. Or it, it could be you know a number of things. Yeah, right. you're right. The blocks didn't have mortar in between them. You right. just stacked them and put a house right. on top of it. But yeah. yeah. So no, those are, those are the things that kind of drive me in this tech, uh, it, you know, in this field, and kind of push it, me forward. Definitely concern. Definitely mm -hmm. concern going forward. And um, I think and and, I, and security. We were talking. You know, yeah. I, I talk a lot about security because I think that, that always has to be a part of it. And and oh, I definitely. didn't realize. And we were, I was talking to, to to one of those speakers, and it came up about internal and external. Oh yeah, internal's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and yeah. and I remember thinking about that previously, but now more so than ever because of the ability to take that. You know, and understand that code. You know, and, and say, oh, I can you know reverse engineer, social engineer, however mm -hmm. the case may be, is and, well, and work it through. So. It's funny. The company that I work for is um, promotes networking and so, uh, social networking. Okay, uh -huh. per, per se. Okay? okay, because in order to either get ahead in your next job or whatnot, you need to know people, and then they, right. you know, it, it works the same in the in, the, fi in, in the in the ph physical way, right? Where you network, you find out about jobs, you find out about contracts, you find out about new technology, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so this company kind of promotes you to network within and meet new people and know who runs what team so that if you want to move to another team, you know who to contact and go there. And it's great. However, they have signs up that say, beware of social networking. <laughs> right. And I saw that as I was heating up a cup of tea after I social networked my way around the building to try to figure out how to get access to a lab. <laughs> Which technically should have failed because it's social networking. Right, right, and right. I said, you know, it's kind of ironic that the sign is up here when right. I just did this. Right. And I told my managers that, and they kind of laughed. They go, yeah, you're right. That's what we can promote a little bit. But it's, it's you fun. don't know, like, and that brings you back yeah. to your testers. What yep. you were talking, that brings it back to just these one-offs and these situations where it's like, oh, well, we would have never, because uh -huh. we—that's not how it should, yeah. you know, that's not how we think, or that's yep. not how it should, you know, whatever. Yeah. But uh, but it well, and that's a good that's a good point because the tester would have caught the fact that the website that I was on to try to get access to the lab mm -hmm. didn't list the room number right on the right floor. Right. So if that would have been solved, or it would have been populated in a way that you could understand, like. Data, data lab on floor one, right? right? Instead of calling it, you know, the the Accenture data or you know whatever data lab on on level C three, you know, in in building seven. Right. I'm like, it's not, and it wasn't what it was actually. It was totally different. Right. Finally, after the like the sixth person, he goes, no, it's this room right here. Yeah, do that one. I'm like, oh. Had access like five minutes later and bam. went downstairs. Bam. Bam. Yeah. yeah, but I would never have known that unless I was socially networking my way around everybody that I knew to try right. to find out who right. had access Come to on. that room. Now you got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So like, I'm throwing out a ping yeah. here, people. Yeah, Marco. but but yet you go. You, yeah, exactly. You go back up to the to the level of the tester that looked right. at it and went, Yeah, this doesn't make sense. This were, this isn't English, right? right. This is this is tech tech geek and right. tech uh, techies speak in a different language. Yeah. We have to learn not to speak in that speak language. In a way. Yeah, but we have to learn to speak in right. a different language right. and be able to... I always tell my teachers that. Oh, I'm like, it's huge. I deserve at least some, a couple of language credits mm -hmm. here. 
Because we're not speaking English anymore. No, 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 no. Um, and, and it's it's funny because one of my friends uh, uh, teaches a class. Uh, it's like project management, something or other, mm -hmm. at, at one of the universities in, in, in the Twin Cities. And um, what, one of the things that is always stated is it, the the students who are not techie, right? Right. right uh, say the developer writes the codes to make the website whatever and it's just completely butchered even English I mean right. it makes no sense right. so I, I think one of the things that that's hard is you're right the outside people don't speak our language we don't speak their language but we need to be able to come to some common right. piece because even I know uh, it, even if I wasn't a techie I know the word codes right. in, in plural in a in a singular sentence doesn't right. make sense right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yet they right. do it anyway right, right. they do it anyway yeah, yeah. And, and and uh, yeah, and, and like you said, it's about it's about figuring out that and, and making those connections and, mm -hmm. and making sure they're Definitely. meaningful and stuff like that. Um, well, Gus, uh, mm -hmm. where can people find more about you? Well, I I've got a website that uh, is kind of up right now. I'm trying to get it back up and get my blog back up. Um, it's uh, www.cosmiccoding.com, and cool. uh, my email is gus at cosmiccoding.com. Twitter is at n underscore f underscore e. Oh, right. um, or you can just search me on, on Twitter, on Gus Emery. Um, speak in a few conferences around, and I... I what's, your, what's your next one that you're going to... Uh, you know, know what? I don't have a next one booked right now. Awesome. I, I, uh, I'm hoping to do KCDC in the, in the spring. Um, I, I've got abstracts out to a few other ones, and we'll just see what, what happens. But, you know, I... I yeah, I'm follow kind of, Yeah, I'm, yeah uh, you're you know. a wealth of knowledge. I could sit here and we talk the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. sure, but. Well, it would be fun, too. Yeah. I mean, this, this was actually fun. It's the first podcast I've been on. Really? Well, uh, well yeah. we'll have to have you back on one of our oh, uh, regular weekly shows. And yeah, definitely. Talk about that kind of stuff. I'd love that. Guys, Gus, thank yep. you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.